I'm here in Brussels at the BMAS Maintenance Awards, which is all about celebrating improvements in reliability and efficiency. And it doesn't matter whether you're making cars or airplanes, or whether you're running a hotel or a shopping mall or a railway, it's incredibly important that we keep things moving. You see, in an automated factory, you've only got to have one component fail. It could be a ball bearing inside one single pump, and it could bring the entire line to a halt. And you could wipe out the entire profits of that factory for a week with just a two or three or four hour delay and all the chaos of trying to reactivate everything. I saw this recently in the printing of my latest book, The Future of Almost Everything. It was exciting to actually hold the physical copies in my hand. And I knew, because I'd seen the whole process, that you only needed one paper jam somewhere, at somewhere, you know, 100 meters away down the line, and suddenly the bump, 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 bump of books would have to stop. And what's more, to start everything up so it's all running perfectly at speed for the next 16 to 24 hours without a break. You know, that, it takes a lot of time. So predicting what's going to go wrong is really what it's all about. It's predictive maintenance. We talk about predictive analytics using artificial intelligence. It's more than just uh, having a cycle of maintenance as you would do with your car. You know, every six months you uh, have a whole schedule of things which you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do at two years, at three years, at five years, etc. And of course, every component in every factory, in every facility like this, also has a maintenance plan attached. But that's not good enough because all kinds of things happen. When you've got literally hundreds of thousands of moving parts, of components, of electrical circuits, of software, all kinds of things can happen which you don't expect. And these are equivalent to you know, a car just blowing up on the motorway or whatever. So how do you predict these kinds of apparently random events? Well, the way to do it is using artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence is basically blind. Robots can't see anything. What you need to do is to give them sensors. Now, uh, Infosys, for example, started to put sensors on oil rigs all over. Vibration sensors, temperature sensors, all kinds of things. Actually, microphones turn out to be very useful because it's the actual wavelength of the sound, the kind of sound patterns which tell you so much about the inside of a mechanical uh, process. And it, localizing the direction of that sound and measuring an increase in certain frequencies of that sound, these things can be early warning predictors of a catastrophe. And once they put in, uh, I think it was about 40 sensors they put in on the first few rigs, they started to get data. And of course, the computer started to map it against actual events. And after a while, the system started to predict where and how there would be a problem. Not necessarily why or what particular piece of equipment was going to fail, but where on the rig there was most likely to be a fire breakout, where on the rig there was most likely to be an explosion or something like that. These kinds of things are absolutely mission critical for the future. And the whole art of this is getting the right sensors in the right places. Once you've done that, the machines can more or less learn. Now it's true, if you put a new machine in, or indeed a new aircraft, as we saw recently with, with, with the Boeing 737 MAX, you know, you've really got to be careful because you don't have that data set. So it takes time to build it up, but once you've got it, it's absolutely like gold dust. Alongside that, of course, is building in redundancy so you can take out that particular pump or the part of the conveyor belt or even an aircraft engine without uh, causing the aircraft to crash or the whole of the uh, assembly line to come to a halt. So that means redundancy, it means uh, optimizing for flexibility, it means in a, in a factory situation that you can divert your product into more than one finishing channel, you've got more than one delivery area, you've got more than one uh, uh, raw material processing plant, and so on. Redundancy, though, is very expensive. Let's take the power industry. In Australia, they have a peak problem, which runs about 72 hours of every year, which is when uh, there's a heat wave and, uh, you know, it, it's, everything's maxed out and they are at risk of power cuts. Now, during those 72 hours, 
10% of the entire capacity of the electricity generating systems is being used that is never used at all. So, in other words, 90% of the infrastructure is what's used normally, but 10% is only used to produce electrical power for 72 hours a year, and the entire rest of the year, those power stations are absolutely idle, doing completely nothing at all. So, building that redundancy in uh, is, is extraordinarily inefficient. I can tell you how inefficient it is. In a normal hour of a normal day in Australia, it only costs around $25 per megawatt hour of electrical power. But at a peak time when everything's burning up in the nation because of a heat wave, the, the power cost charged to, uh, elect by electricity companies can soar from $25, megawatt hour, uh, $25 per megawatt hour to over $25,000. That's simply because that's the cost of keeping all of that electrical power station capacity running all year round just to turn on for 72 hours. It really doesn't make sense. So when we're looking at the maintenance of that system, you can imagine how critical it would be if one of those additional facilities that was in reserve just broke down. It means the nation would not have any capacity whatsoever uh, to prevent cutouts uh, during a heat wave. Along comes Tesla and of course Tesla is seeing a tremendous market because there are other ways to manage peak capacity. If you just build a whole load of batteries in the desert they can sit there doing absolutely nothing for almost the entire year but for 72 hours a year they can provide a much needed surge of additional power and then when the, the whole situation has calmed down a bit and the weather's cooled off you can recharge those batteries again. And the batteries cost much less, they have no moving parts, once you've built them they sit there, there's no maintenance required. So there we've gone from a very high maintenance, very unreliable essentially technology, to a very low maintenance solution using batteries to replace turbines. And you will find examples of such transitions in every industry, in every factory, in every company, in every airline, in every rail company and so on, trying to optimize, to take out entire areas of risk, to make systems maintenance free in as far as possible, to build in redundancy at very low cost. So that's what the future is all about. As some people here call it to maintenance 2.0. You know, you go to Siemens and they're talking about um, industry 4.0. The numbers don't really matter. All we're talking about is a new generation of making things, producing things, and maintaining things. And there's one final thought. Because of the growth of population from around seven and a half billion people today to around eleven and a half, eleven and a half billion. That's right by 2060, 2065. And because of the massive migration of around one billion human beings that we will see from rural areas into cities in the next 30 years as part of a longer term trend that's been going on for the last 50 years, because of all this, we are going to see more spending on infrastructure in the next 30 years than in all of human history. More schools, more power stations, more water treatment facilities, more airports, more railways and so on um, in the next 30 years than all of history. Now what that means is that the bill for maintenance is going to go through the roof. So that's why what's been talked about today at this BMAS event is so missionally important. Incredibly important to keeping the show on the road keeping the wheels turning of society and doing it in an affordable and sustainable way.